Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the isometric camera icon tutorial in Inkscape. <laughs> okay, let's jump right into it. So, the first thing we have to know is that we're going to be using isometric to draw this icon. <coughs> so we're going to be drawing lines of 30 degrees. We have our colors on the left hand side and on our right hand side we have the backdrop which is a smooth purple radial gradient and slightly opaque purple circles okay let's get into it so the first thing we're going to do we're going to go to our bezier tool and we're going to draw these 30 degree lines with by holding control at the 30 degree angle you know and if you're not sure about the 30 degree angle you know you can reference this because I will leave a link to this this box also so that you can get it and this box will help you um, this is what I call the isometric circle box I use this to keep my circles in line as well as my lines at times and it's just generally useful you know when doing isometric work because often enough you have to do circles in isometric okay so I'm just gonna put this here this box and use the Bezier tool by pressing B click left click and hold control and if you hold control is the line is gonna move by increments Of 15 degrees so on the third one so you've got 0 15 30 on the third one you get 30 degrees good so we're going to draw a bezier line of 30 degrees like so good and I'm going to draw it about here let me just remove the box this okay awesome and your first line should be roughly a width of 28 to 30 along the scale and then we're going to draw a connecting line to this which is straight and that line should be roughly we draw that line here so we're just creating the base of our camera right now we just get the ruler tool and measure this quickly so that you know exactly because I am using exact measurements here and we have 26 millimeters so this is in millimeter scale so we have one that's 28 to 30 and then we have a 26 and then we're going to continue the line and this next portion should be 90 to 92 let's make this slightly thicker so that you can see it a bit better 90 to 92 alright and then we're going to draw a final line you know for this base which is roughly the same size as the um, the 26 and we're going to place that line right here you know perhaps a bit smaller and yeah. and if I check the distance for this line it's about 20 25 yeah about 25 width good Okay, just did something wrong a little bit. This 90 line needs to be 30 degrees, but that's pretty simple to do. Just going to um, delete this. And unify these two. And just, just make sure that this is indeed 30 degrees.
Now this is 30 degrees right here. So let me just lift this up a bit. Good, so it matches it. Right, so we've got our 30 degrees. Uh, and this is just to help us to draw the base of our shape right here. I think this looks good. Uh, we're going to draw this line that was 25. And just going to draw a line down here. And this will mark the and then draw a 30 degree skew to it. All right. It's 30 degrees, no, that's 15. There we are. Good. Okay, so all of this is for the base of the camera. And I do advise that you use the measurements that I have. This is a, I'm not, mistaken let me check the pixel amount it's about 2200 by 1257 pixels you know but you could use it easy to use a 190 1920 by 180 um, full HD as the canvas background okay let's get rid of this okay then so it doesn't look like much, but this is essentially our base. So the first thing we want to do is get the circle up here, duplicate. We want the top circle. And we're going to bring it down here. This circle. And what we want to do is align it to the edges. As much as possible good and then we're going to select this and we're going to go to path select the longer piece here path and union and let's just delete this piece that's connected all right so we have our circle here and we can even delete these two nodes here so we're just going into our node editor you can press f2 to go there and just delete so because we don't need those parts. Good. Now for the next part, just gonna draw it down. Let's draw a 30 degree line here so we know where to stop. Out here. And we're gonna draw a connecting line for these two. Join them with a line segment. Right, so we can lift this up later on. Let's lift up a bit now. A bit more distance. Right, and I am being meticulous at this stage because this will make the rest of it much easier. Okay, so we have the base here. I think it's thick enough for you to see. Then we're going to duplicate it and lift it up. And we want the distance between the top and the base to be roughly 70 millimeters. So we're going to measure this line. And what do we have here? It has a height of two. Height's a bit big. Let's see if we can make this a bit smaller. Oh, it's in pixels. Let's change this to millimeters. Right, this should be roughly 70 millimeters. Awesome. Oh, before you even duplicate this, let me just curve the edges too. So in our example, we have curved edges. And how we achieve that, let's put this in white so we can separate it. Let's put this to one. All right, so how we achieve this, those curved edges, is by using the top circle from the isometric box circle box that we have on top that's why I like using that because it helps me with the circles 
and we're just going to place them exactly along the edges of each vertice or each vertex sorry well vertice can work each vertex of our shape that we've just created so where the two lines meet each corner we're going to put the circle and we're going to line up so that the circle's edges match up with the edge of the stroke as best as possible Good. and then what are we going to do press B or go to the Bezier tool in your toolbox and we're going to draw lines right through where the white circle completely obscures the black stroke so where the white circle completely covers the black stroke we're going to draw a bezier l i'm going to do that for every one of these first so you can see what we're doing and about here so you're looking to see where the circle completely obscures the stroke the white circle completely obscures the black stroke and the one up here All right, so it's essential that you make the circle and the stroke the same size stroke because that makes it easier to see how, to how they obscure and then what we're going to do grab this L that bezier that we created uh, holding shift grab the original stroke base and we're going to go to path and difference I think the vision may be better but difference works as well and we're going to select these two which is the white circle and the stroke and I'm going to go to path and union okay my example is a bit jagged at first but if you do it correctly and if you use thinner strokes also because it's difficult to do with thicker strokes. If you use thinner strokes, you have a better luck of um, better chance of getting it perfect. And we have our curved edge. We're going to do the same here. We're going to go to path and division. Good. Let's drag this thing out. Then we're going to grab the right circle, grab the stroke, go to path and union and then you can go ahead and fix the, the abnormalities a bit and we're going to do the same here I'm going to go to path and difference let this in a stroke go to path and union just create the strokes a bit and last we're going to go up here path and difference so use division that's okay and go to path and union and create the strokes because I say you'll get better results when you use thinner strokes okay so these some of these strokes too these notes okay so we have our roundup here and I was going to select these two notes but let's um, delete some of these stray notes here so that there's no confusion good and see that we delete some of these too so let's go ahead and delete in these nodes so that I can um, move on to the next step without any hiccup okay so we're going to select these two nodes for the straight edge right here and we're going to create a new node in between it and it should be a square node I'm just going to pull it up gently 
let's make it a completely symmetrical node uh, we're going to pull out good okay now we can lift our base up it's going to duplicate it lift it up since we already know the line of height good and then we're going to press bezier press b for bezier tool and going to lift this up here and close the bezier move this to the side I'm going to do the same with these next points let's turn on the snap tool and you're going to turn on snapped paths good and cost nodes and we're going to draw lines up here good snap here and carry you down I'm going to do the same here holding control to make sure it's 30 degrees but you can always just follow the line also and come down here and come down here but and lastly we have the circle I'm going to look for the furthest edge that we can find and we're going to draw a diagonal connected to this path right here and draw a line here so now we have like the 3d base for our camera our isometric camera Let's delete these lines good so now we can actually begin to color this in i'm going to use this color for the top use this color um, for the middle we're going to use this dark blue here and then for the side it's going to be a mix between this dark blue and this light blue it's going to go to fill and pick up the mix it could be slightly darker good for the front we're going to use the same blue and we're going to use the same blue here and base it with the same blue good so now that we have our shape let's just bring this down the hierarchy a bit good going to do going to grab this tool we're just going to bend it up slightly to take out the snap tool and same here just going to bend it in use the node tool and just bend it in and then going to put it underneath same way put this underneath put this underneath good now we can see it's starting to look like the base of our camera yeah let's remove some of these strokes now so I'm gonna select all of them and remove the strokes and just select the base move the stroke and we can fill in the areas where there's gaps okay nice let's add a little gradient here and let's connect this line coming down with the bottom base here and make it like this bring a dark color and let's give it a slight gradient all right, so we can see that it's coming around. Pull this out a bit. All right, just to help us differentiate it better. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna draw the circle that's protruding out that represents the lens. And it's gonna increase the size a bit. I want to make it so that the lens takes in a good portion because we are anticipating a large sensor. All right, and what we're gonna do now, we're going to color this lens, this white. And then we're gonna go to 
extensions generate from path and motion and we want this to be 30 degrees the angle and we're going to make this roughly 50 apply and close um, it's a little bit small but um, we'll work with this for now in terms of its length but we'll work with it for now and the circle and the 30 degrees enables us to get a projection of the circle down the 30 for down the angle of 30 degrees path so first thing first I'm going to get the original circle and put it underneath good and then I'm going to bring some of these underneath also all right so the strokes can tell us what's happening and you can see it building it looks like a, a cylinder right now good so we're going to move on to the next part of it is that we want a ring going across this cylinder first let's get rid of the strokes on the top because they're a bit distracting and let's give the strokes on the bottom a slight darker tone so we can differentiate them the circle the this part on the bottom or the inside of the tube slightly darker so we can differentiate the two good then I'm just going to view and go to display mode outline just quickly we're going to select this circle and we're going to drag this circle that will duplicate it with control and D make sure the circle is selected duplicate it control and D and bring it down roughly here then go to view display mode and normal just going to hit control and shift and drag it out so that we scale it up drag out this handle here Oops, so gently we're going to give this the color blue and then just bring it back a little bit and go to uh, extensions generate from path motion once more and let's give this motion roughly 20 and we're going to apply with the same 30 degrees good and we're going to close good and then we're going to bring this circle to the bottom and we're not going to need the inside for this one so we can delete that we're not even going to need the circle actually and that gives us our ring. Let's bring it down a bit and go to path and union. Okay, so now we have our manual ring and that's the ring where we turn when we're dealing in manual focus for our camera and I'm just going to duplicate it control and D drag it down a bit give it a slightly darker color place it underneath and drag it up let's get rid of these dialog boxes right here and yeah let's get rid of that and we have our turning ring and what we're going to do now we're going to duplicate this turning ring one more time select these outer notes and hold control and push down or oh, don't hold control but follow the line if you want and wish if you're worried about you know falling out of the 30 you can draw 30 degree lines on both sides to guide you and we're going to color this the darker blue that we colored the inset of the ring to make it look 3d good 
And next we've got the CDs two lines that we created at the bottom and top. Let's just delete the bottom one and duplicate the top one. Carry it down and bring it across. I'm going to select these two. I'm going to go to path and union. Then we're going to hold, press D and select the different colors so we can see them. We're going to go to path, path effects, and we're going to hit the plus sign. Have these two have to be unified. And we're going to go to interpolate sub paths. And you're going to see it's going to draw lines in between these two lines that we have. And we want about how much we want here now. I think nine will suffice and drag these lines back a bit. Yeah, this looks good. Drag these lines back and we're going to hit control shift and C to apply and C to apply the path effect or you go to path object to path and then we're going to thicken these up a bit so we're going to go to fill and stroke object fill and stroke fill, go to stroke style and we're going to thicken up these paths by say five oh not five it's in millimeter sorry one yeah i think one is good then we're going to hit control um alt and c to change these strokes into actual paths or you can go to path and stroke the path and you know for the perspective i'm just going to grab these and bring this up a bit and grab this and bring this up tad good and then go to path and difference so with these two selected and we have the oscillating ring right here I can move this back slightly okay so the next part we're going to grab the circle here duplicate it and we're going to make it a dark of the brighter orange let's move it to the front let's scale this down and then scale it up a bit and then we're going to duplicate it with control and d and scale up the scale down the duplication and change that to a darker orange good and now we can move on into our lens head and what we're going to do here is should have kept the original circle let me just duplicate it one more time bring it down here and we're going to make this go to generate from path and motion we're going to make this approximately let's see if we can make it 30 apply okay let's see what it gives us and this is relatively a good size good we're going to want all of this to be blue bring down the main circle and um, lift this portion here good so this time we are going to need the bottom element here so we're going to make that darker and we're going to unify it and we're going to unify the top but we're not going to need the inner circle the original circle delete that okay and now we can sort of begin to create that interesting shape at the front of our camera and I'm going to draw lines of 30 degrees placing where I think these curves should go okay 
So we're gonna come here and following these lines, let's make this one white so we can see which ones we're following. I'm going to follow these 30 degree lines and I'm going to draw a rectangle, making sure that the lineup is as close to 30 degrees as possible. I use the increments, I use these boxes that we created here from the for the oscillating ring as a guide to create the lines for the lens head. And then I'm just going to select this box I created and I'm going to select the lens head and we're going to go to path and different. Oh, supposed to be different, sorry. Path and difference. For cross here. Good, and we're gonna do the same for where each line is. So I'm gonna turn these black. Everything seems to be grouped together. I'm gonna turn these two black and turn these two white because we're operating on these two now. And we're gonna do the same. Just draw a line in and um, path and difference. Oh, make sure the two are selected. And um, let's draw this line a bit better. Path and difference here. Yeah. And we're gonna do up top now. So change these from white to black. Change these from black to white. And I only change the colors because I want you to be able to see what I'm working on so that they don't interfere with each other. Draw the box with the Bezier tool. Select these two here and go path and difference. Okay, so let's delete these lines here because I don't need them anymore. And this grouping, sure. So there it seems to be automatically grouping things. Let's delete these. And we have, I think, a couple more. Let's draw some right here. I'm gonna draw one right here and bring it down. And make sure the two of them are selected and go to path and difference. And we're going to go ahead and make the circles out of these. Yeah, I think this looks good. So let's go and make this a curve. It's just gonna use um, freehand here and just use the handles. I could use the isometric circles, but I think we can um, make this via freehand. You know, and like I said, the isometric circles are there to help you. They'll help you a bit for this, but this one may be slightly difficult even to use isometric circles because the surface is curved. But I mean, you can still pretty much use it. And let's bring this out a bit as well. Awesome. Good. And then I'm going to drag these in a bit. And drag these ones in a bit too. Same for these two. Let's drag them in a bit. All right, and we're just dragging it in because um, often enough, these two pieces are longer than the rest. Good. Have our pretty much base here, and we can go ahead and remove the stroke. And we're going to need to just select, double click to go into node mode, enter in some nodes here. 
let's enter in two more nodes insert new node I'm just going to delete this piece here and drag up these handles to create our circle and um, create another node let's drag this piece down a bit and create our circle our rounded edges sorry and let's do the same here drag this down bring this up a bit and circle and we're going to decay this a bit drag this up drag our rounded circle so we're just inserting nodes and creating the circles creating the rounded edges sorry I typically insert two nodes and just delete this one we get our rounded piece the same here All right and we're just going to move this down a bit and create our rounded piece and do the same here insert twice move this down and create our rounded piece and last but not least insert two nodes drag this down and create our rounded piece awesome so we have our rounded lens head good and it's a little bit too much flush to the left so we're just going to bring it in and make it always flush to the right you know yeah and then we're just going to duplicate this inset here bring it down and let's select this blue and drop it so that our blue has an inset too let's just select the edges and bring them in so that it doesn't interfere okay cool and this somewhere there's a busiest so no okay that looks good then delete all right, and the isometric camera is really taking shape now. So we can go ahead and create things like the buttons. I'm just going to draw for the isometric circle top here. Duplicate, carry it down. Lift this up. And we have our shutter button. Duplicate this, carry it somewhere over here. Let's lift this up, draw some lines too to connect the edges and put it underneath so that we have a button with more size to it. Let's increase the radius a bit doesn't have to be that long either you can carry it down I think in the picture this one was purple so we're going to make a purple top and the bottom uh, purple and make the connector purple too and this one had also a board around it black border this can come down even further. Bring it down even further. Right, so we have the black circle button right here. Okay. Now, for the purpose of the tutorial, we can follow in and do the flash head but I'm just going to copy and paste it so I think that's um, something that you can do let 
right here. And for this one right here, which is where we would place the flash, a convenient little box. We're just going to lift it up, you know, by a K amount. Bring it across and bring it down. Paste it white. I'm going to do the same on this side. Bring it across. Bring it down. And bring it across. And bring it here. Right, and then we can separate them a bit. Make sure this is 30 degrees. So you go off, it's not 30. And we can connect these together. Last but not least, let's have our orange digital display. Make it orange, bring it down, and drop it underneath. Drop this underneath too. And there we have our isometric camera. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you um, have any questions, be sure to ask. You know, if you have any more suggest suggestions, you can use that. You can use this platform to add the suggestions. I appreciate that, and the comment section appreciates that. So go ahead and add your constructive points. I have much to learn and I appreciate your input. But until we see each other again, get up and design and learn. Later.